So there's a lot of overlap of methods in those. So I'll try to cover a subset of these. So the first white box approach called retrieval augmented LM pre-training or real essentially augments language model pre-training with an external retriever. Uh, for those who don't know about BERT, BERT's mask language model pre-training, essentially uh, uh, the BERT model has been pre-trained and the pre-training has been done in an MLM or a mask language modeling fashion in which the inputs are, a uh, few tokens of the input are masked and the output is, uh, the model is made to predict uh, the complete output, the unmasked output. So here, what the authors do is that uh, while predicting the unmasked output, they use retrieved information and they use retrieved information from a dense retriever. So in the figure, you can see that the user input X is masked and then is used to retrieve from a knowledge corpus Z, which is shown in green to retrieve a document, which is then sent to a bird style encoder to predict the mask token. So the main idea is to predict mask tokens, not solely based on the surrounding context as done in BERT, but also by utilizing external documents fetched through uh, cosine similarity or maximum inner product. And then they do this for further to fine tune for open domain question answering as well. So you can see at the bottom that the input uh, is basically a natural language question and um, external documents are retrieved in order to generate an answer for that question. This is actually a retrieval augmented language model pre-training. So technically it's retrieval augmented classification, but uh, the approach is applied for like this approach is an inspiration for a lot of other further approaches as well. So the retriever is essentially two separate BERT uh, encoders uh, for query and documents. And because backpropagation also updates the document encoder, uh, so document em embeddings needs to, need to be recomputed frequently. So that update is done at frequent time steps. So while the training of the BERT model happens in the background, and that is while the BERT classifier is trained. So there are three useful findings of this work. Um, that is, one is that output token probabilities increase with uh, when we add top K retrieved uh, or top K gold documents with that is BERT without when retrieval is added to BERT, the top K, um, the pro token probability improves. Uh, the more frequent refreshes of the document index, that is the retrieval index, the performance further improves. And uh, indeed, that is very costly as well with larger index sizes, especially of the order of uh, 10,000 even, or even with those document encoders, which go beyond 100 million parameters. Uh, so some other works use a BM25 or uh, to fix the document encoder, or they basically freeze the document encoder and just update, backpropagate up to uh, just the query encoder. And pre-training helps improve performance on open domain QA as well. I am assuming there's, there's uh, like uh, some of the like basics of NLP are known, but please feel free to ask any questions if there are, uh, and I'm happy to delve into detail into any of them. But this one was essentially a retrieval augmented generation, uh, which introduced two architectures, ra uh, rack token and rack sequence. And they used retrieval augmentation for the task of generation itself, wherein the retriever was BERT and the generator was a BART large model. What we saw in the previous slide, which was used for BERT, in this case was extended to BART. So the rack sequence variant, uh, there were two variants, rack sequence and rack token. Uh, the rack sequence variant, it maintained a um, consistent document set during the generation of various tokens. So incorporating a retriever improved performance for a lot of standard natural language generation tasks like open domain question answering, abstractive question answering, and fact verification. And uh, even on human evaluation, they found that uh, there is improvement in factuality. Another interesting approach uh, is basically replug. So um, what uh, the approaches before this, what they did was that they took a query, they retrieved certain documents, and then used those documents uh, to a sub downstream generator or a subsequent generator to generate uh, text. But um, these authors argued that, okay, like when we are retrieving documents, those documents, uh, the retrieval process might be just, just useful for um, retrieving, for example, documents for a search engine, but they might not necessarily improve uh, downstream uh, tasks for generation. So what these, uh, what these authors do is that they try to minimize the way the retriever uh, retrieves documents as well as um, how the generator generates using those documents. 
So they introduce a they minimize the KL divergence between the language models distribution and the document distribution. So you can see that here for a query like jobs is the CEO of uh, first the documents are retrieved and uh, there is a retrieval likelihood which is computed. And these retrieval likelihoods are computed from the relevancy of the individual documents itself. And then each document is individually fed to the generator. And the generator subsequent text, generated text, the perplexity of that text is used uh, to get the language model likelihood across the different documents. And then the language model likelihood and the retrieval likelihood, they are minimized. And the loss function is basically the KL divergence between uh, these two. And that is back propagated uh, up till the retriever and the query. So the retriever is now retrieving documents which are um, useful for, uh, which are kind of minimizing the perplexity of the subsequent text. So uh, those were all the retrieval augmented generation uh, approaches in which what is being retrieved is essentially uh, textual information or document. But we could ex we could think on more general applications as well. And if we ask an LLM, okay, who is the head of UK? And the LLM generates the head of the government of the United Kingdom is the prime minister. That's completely fine. And that's um, factually correct as well as um, it does not, the LLM does not need much information to answer that question as well. Uh, but if we have a query which needs external information, something like who's the current head of UK, then we need the model to retrieve external documents, retrieve current news, and use them to generate an answer like the current prime minister is Rishi Sunak. But there could be uh, stronger app, like applications in which we could we would need a query that needs an external action, something like email Eugene with a rag idea. And in this case, the LLM has to basically decide like how to how to uh, perform the action and that the decision could be either we feed it with a fix with a large set of um, uh, API descriptions and then it gen like it uh, generates basically an API call or it could be we can make it train with API information such that it generates API or function calls directly. There has been a lot of interest recently in um, making tool augmented LLMs, which are or essentially making language models perform actual tasks. So, and this integration basically opens up a lot of possibilities for creating more like dynamic and more powerful LLM applications because now we are no more thinking about uh, just applications which are input and output or applications which are just in text, but we are thinking of more real life applications in which which could uh, where LLMs are being used as agents or subsystems of a larger process. So for so here there are multiple approaches that people have tried. So in a generative fashion, we basically give the LLM training data of API calls itself. We would attach or concatenate API descriptions to it and make the LLM basically generate API calls by default. Uh, the other option is that uh, we might have a large number of API calls and then maybe just as a rule, uh, retrieval augmented fashion, the model could, uh, the LLM could basically retrieve a set of API descriptions and then decide which API to call. And that uh, the way it could call could be uh, again in a generative fashion. So there, there, are, uh, there has been recently also in the last six, seven months, a lot of work. Uh, on tool augmented generation as well. So especially two imp two crucial works. Uh, one is the Gorilla API store, which is basically a data set of user inputs and corresponding API calls, uh, which have been generated using another approach called self-instruct. Uh, so these API calls are essentially about 1.6 thousand APIs for PyTorch, Hugging Face, and TensorFlow Hub models. So these are actual Python snippets of these uh, models. And what the authors do is that they fine tune a Llama 7B model and for API retrieval, they use a BM25 retriever. Then there is uh, the tool bench data set in which the authors argue that, okay, like previous data sets were not really uh, real life. Users are gonna use PyTorch, Hugging Face and TensorFlow based um, Python codes, but they would actually use real API calls, something maybe from Rapid, from a website like Rapid API. So uh, they basically generate a data set with 16,000 API calls from Rapid API. And the way they generate this is by prompting a GPT 3.5 with multiple APIs and 
then they generate uh, user queries. So it's it's a reverse process rather than have a user query which naturally talks about uh, calling an API. They feed an API description and uh, ask the model to basically uh, generate a user query which the user would hypothetically say uh, for a particular API. And then they use that to fine tune a Llama to 7B model and which they call as uh, tool LLM. So um, then uh, now I'll come to black box approaches. Earlier, uh, we discussed like these three rack token, realm and replug as the black uh, white box approaches. But uh, we'll come to black box approaches in which the generator is basically like a black box and we don't know the weights. So we don't know even the last layer of the um, model. Uh, before going to other approaches of black, bo black box uh, rag approaches, there have been, there is, if we look at a lot of IR problems as well. So many uh, IR problems, especially generative IR problems also employ a rag formulation. So for example, query reformulation, wherein we have a given user query, like a given user search query. And then we retrieve documents using BM25 or other lightweight retrievers and use those documents to generate a reformulated query. So that itself is a rack formulation itself, which is called pseudo relevance feedback. So uh, pseudo relevance feedback is useful basically to improve the experience when imagine like you're typing on a search engine, you're typing uh, a search query and, but you look at the search results and now you decide to change your search query. So that is essentially you have taken feedback from the initial documents that you've seen. That is relevance feedback. Uh, but in this case, uh, it, it, could, it could be automated also, which is called pseudo relevance feedback. Um, then that is what query reformulation is. Then we have query for completion in which uh, we could have maybe while a user is typing uh, suggestions of what, what uh, different queries uh, the user could possibly want to type, um, essentially auto completion. So here uh, we could have uh, an external retrieval database or may maybe like this uh, Moria's approach included like a try uh, of popular search queries. And every time the user types a new character, uh, the try is the top queries from the try are suggested to the user. And then generative re-ranking, which in the last few months again is uh, become very popular in which we have the input as a ranked list of documents, but shown as a single string and then you prompt an LM to basically generate a re-ranked list of documents or a list of document IDs which is basically rank GPT. So yeah so uh, one of the interesting problems uh, which I really like and which is quite innovative and also bears inspiration from a lot of previous uh, IR approaches as well is basically conditional retrieval. So uh, we've seen that most of the previous RAG approaches always involve a single step of retrieval. But it might happen that retrieval might not be needed at all. Like a vanilla language model might already be knowledgeable about some questions like something like, what is two plus two? In that case, we don't need the model to retrieve external information. And um, I mean, we don't even need a model to retrieve, uh, to uh, get hold of a calculator because like something a string like what is two plus two is generally naturally talked about so much that it's uh, like it won't be hard for the model to just generate it based on the frequency of patterns. The other case might be that retrieval can itself be harmful. There could be a lot of documents which are themselves harmful. There is lots of uh, misinformed content in them. So, or there could be like entities uh, like retrieval, for example, um, we could retrieve the information about less popular entities and less popular entities are generally like the information is not uh, accurate, uh, then there could be, uh, we could need even retrieval more than once. So especially for long form question answering, where we want to generate uh, maybe multiple paragraphs of text, or we want to generate a story, or we want to generate a long essay. In that case, we want to retrieve at multiple times while uh, the generation is being performed. So it's So the decision to retrieve is very conditional in nature. So a lot of these recent approaches basically focus on when to make that decision to retrieve. So, so for example, Flare. Flare argues to invoke retrieval upon um, seeing some hallucination in some future generated text. So uh, Flare basically advocates for a more efficient method in which it, it, ac it activates retrieval only when LLMs exhibit a lack of necessary knowledge. And that lack of necessary knowledge is indicated by the generation of low probability tokens. So the model basically generates uh, 
in a vanilla fashion and whenever the model generates uh, tokens which have low logit probabilities in that case um, retrieval is triggered so it basically involves iteratively creating a temporary next sentence which if containing low probability tokens is used as a query again for retrieval and this process is repeated until the desired sequence length is generated and within this framework flare instruct also directs the llms to generate uh, specific tokens that trigger retrieval so specifically the llm is trained to generate text with which a function call like uh, search and its search query like joe biden attended uh, search joe biden university so, so the, basically the retrieve text is then placed at the point of function call. So tool former creates uh, tool augmented data by annotating dialogue training data with interleaving tool invocations. So essentially when we, uh, let's say we want to train a dialogue, vanilla dialogue model, we collect a set of conversations and um, basically train a generative, a generative model. Uh, but in the case, uh, in tool former, what they do is like they take dialogue training data and whenever they see low perplexity uh, using some other model of dialogue text they insert api calls at those positions so now we have like conversational data annotated with uh, api calls then there's a verify and edit approach that is whenever the model encounters less than average consistency on chain of thought generated answers consistency is measured by making the model generate multiple outputs and those could be generated from either sampling them at different uh, temperatures or they could be like by paraphrasing the input query in multiple ways and then seeing whether the model's response is consistent or not. And if the model's response is not consistent, then, then retrieval is triggered. So the verify and edit approach essentially uses this uh, less than average consistency while chain of thought prompting. But uh, a lot of factually improved answers have been found with chain of thought prompting in which we, along with the query, we provide a prompt like let's think step by step, or we could provide a few short prompt in which we provide examples of the input query as well as an explanation to generate the answer. So forcing the model to basically uh, think step by step and uh, model outputs have surprisingly be found uh, more factual in that case in which the model uh, generates better on like a lot of benchmarks. And verify and edit approach, which argues that, okay, that these chain of thought generation could also use a retrieval uh, to improve the chain of thought rational. Uh, then this approach, self-knowledge prompt, essentially uh, prompts the model itself to ask, like, do you need additional information to answer the question? I feel sometimes it can be a hit and miss approach because uh, you're just asking the model in a different way. But on a lot of tasks, this approach works as well. Rowan uses an ensemble approach uh, for the question of when to retrieve. So they basically paraphrase and translate the input query into multiple languages and then make the model generate multiple answers. And retrieval is only performed when there's a disagreement between those generated answers across source and target languages. And they argue that different languages may interpret queries uh, differently, providing basically cues for inconsistency. And there are others which basically work on popularity. For example, uh, uh, WitQA RAG basically estimate the need for retrieval from the popularity of uh, entity relation triples in Wikipedia. As language models, uh, LLMs have been known to hallucinate over entities appearing in the long tail of uh, popular entities. So if we basically draw like uh, all, we put all the entities on a popularity graph and we take all the uh, less popular, the ones which are appearing on the tail. So on those entities, LLMs are generally known to perform worse as compared to the ones which are in the head of the popularity distribution. And hence, uh, one condition, uh, what these uh, people do use for triggering retrieval is basically the presence of a, a low tailed entity or a long tail uh, popular entity. So then the self DC, uh, basically, which decompose compositional user questions into smaller questions and then estimate whether each of those questions uh, seeks information on events before or after the cutoff of uh, gathering training data for the LLM. So essentially like uh, this assumes that, okay, that the LLM um, once before the training data, the LLM answers everything for the training data perfectly. So whenever there's new information, which, talk, which basically talks about information after the training data has been um, generated, 
uh, then retrieval is triggered. So till now we've seen like approaches which perform direct or conditional retrieval, uh, that is, and which prompt the model directly. Uh, but many complex tasks like arithmetic and multi-hop question answering rely on multiple reasoning steps. So this is what I was talking about, with essentially chain of thought rationals. Uh, so essentially, uh, for those, like if uh, just to give a brief overview of what chain of thought is, so we have a, a general question like, okay, what year was the Argentine, Argentine actor who directed El Tio Disparato born? And uh, the, the non-chain of thought or the general uh, way would be just to feed this question to an LLM. But uh, a lot of approaches have been found that if you make the LLM basically generate rationals, so something like um, first the Argentine actor who directed El Tio Desperado is Fernando Berry, and second Fernando Berry was born in 1925, and so on. So there is an improved set of um, possibility of getting the answer. But um, there could be a possibility that the chain of thought rationals which the model generates itself could be wrong, that could they could themselves be less factual. And hence, some of the authors, what they argue is that, okay, what we'll do is like we'll use um, retrieval to improve those rationals. So essentially, the rational is blue is then, rational in blue is basically used to, is used for um, ensuring, like used for checking whether through external information. So and then verifying questions are generated. So something like who directed LTO Disparato? When was Fernando Berry born? And then the answers which are got from those are used. Are if those answers basically are consistent, are consistent, then they are used as subsequent rationals. So it's essentially that assuming that you have a poor initial COT rational, then and if they they are inconsistent, then you retrieve information to improve that rational and then subsequently your answer would also improve. Uh, then there is uh, the chain of knowledge approach in which the rationals are updated in parallel. And apart from like Wikipedia, they use additional retrieval sources like SQL and some medical knowledge sources, which are used as indexing data. So a query adapter first identifies the domain, like which domain, whether in which the answer can be obtained from Wikipedia or it's a, a medical domain wherein a medical knowledge base is required or so on. And then the particular retrieval was invoked by, uh, uh, which is uh, which is related to that domain. Uh, then this is the, uh, like, this is the part which I was talking about wherein RAG is also used post-inference, that is for fact verification or revision. So here, once, like, we here, unlike previous approaches in which uh, retrieval augmentation was applied before generation, here retrieval augmentation is applied after the model has completely generated its output. So if you see on the figure on the right, there's like a blue, uh, the text generation model, uh, which is, and that output X actually could also be some other text, which also needs attribution. It could be even like some fake, uh, fake text, which we have written and that also uh, used for claim verification. So uh, applications are in both, but the models essentially remain the same. That is you, uh, once there is a mod model generated text, then uh, that text is used to retrieve external information. And then external information is then used to revise the output and also generate an attribution report. So there are other related problems as well, um, like which are um, recently being um, evaluated. One is the robustness of RAG to external documents. So the external documents that we are used in a RAG setting could have a noise in different forms. And they could they could be contradictions. So like this paper called RGB uh, essentially created a data set of four different types where a retrieval augmented system could fail because of some um, problem in the retriever. So the first one is basically the external documents could contain noise. Uh, the second case is of negative rejection in which external all the external documents are uh, contain noise. So essentially the model should learn to ignore that information. Um, the third is in which the um, external information is spread out across different documents and we expect the model to essentially um, be able to combine information across these multiple uh, documents and this could even scale up to like multiple sources as well uh, and there is the question of counterfactual robustness uh, in which the mo model basically uh, the documents are either purposely 
um, there are adversarial documents which are inserted or which and which are even contradictory to um, general or like actual uh, retrieved text. Uh, 